Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Sunstone and today I'm bringing you the 10th episode in my Coral Island Diaries series where we take a look at what the team has been working on behind the scenes. We have a lot to cover today so let's just jump right in. I figured that farming updates would be a good place to start this episode since I just posted a video all about farming in Coral Island. The team has been working on a fertilization system for our crops which I believe is independent from the lab upgrades. I wonder whether we will craft fertilizers, purchase them, or both, and what they will have to offer. Will they help our crops retain water, speed up their growth, or increase the number of produce per plant? Will there be some sort of magical fertilizer gifted to us from the goddess of flowers, the merfolk, or the giants that will have some sort of crazy effects on our crops, like change their color or make them grow instantly on the spot? I feel like there's so many possibilities for this feature. Future. The team was also working on implementing seasonal soil, which will likely change color and potentially texture across the four seasons, and we're further designing even more crops for us to choose from. Can you believe there'll be even more crops than what we've already seen? They've also been working on artisan equipment. One of the notes included a jar emoji, so I'm guessing there will be some sort of machine to make preserves like jams, pickles, and more. As for mining elements, the team was working on a variety of monster designs, including something called slimes and even some apparently cute monsters. Are they gonna be so cute that we won't even want to slay them? I'm so curious. They were also updating monster loot icons, meaning that the monsters will drop loot that we can collect and potentially craft with. For those of you who prefer to avoid combat in games, just a reminder that there will be the option to turn it off in Coral Island. The team has also been quite busy working away at features for or our gameplay under the sea. We know that the entire diving system is being reworked, so we don't really know what to expect beyond there being an underwater open world, the existence of the Coral Island current, the possibility of encountering sea creature NPCs, and bribing them to unlock new areas, and of course, the hopes of one day stumbling upon the Merfolk Kingdom and finding true love. Some things we can add to this list are that we will be able to forage under water as the team has been adding more diving scavenger pools. We will also be able to find something arguably even more exciting and that is underwater treasure chests. So there is going to be so much for us to collect and discover on the sea floor that we can bring back to land with us. I'm so curious to know what will be in the treasure chests. Will there be gemstones, artifacts, other sunken treasures? I'm so excited to find out. The team has also been working on tweaking the anchor system which we briefly saw in one of the trailers. So it appears that the anchor is how you will enter and likely exit the ocean. I'm wondering if you will always enter and exit at the same location, if there will be several predetermined locations that you can choose from, like we saw on the initial diving map. Maybe you can choose while you're underwater and pin a location for the next time you enter the sea, or maybe the anchor will bring you back to the last place you left off. So wherever you leave from, maybe that's where you will re-enter. Even Further, the team has been updating diving quests and the pressure meter system, which we know will indicate how deep we are as we're underwater and exploring around. And we also know we have to upgrade our diving suit to go to the deeper depths. So this is quite important. The team was also updating diving NPC interactions. This makes me wonder what exact interactions they are referencing between the player and the sea creatures, the merfolk. Will some of the land NPCs also be spotted diving underwater, like Surya for instance? It would make sense if you weren't the only person diving, which I feel like would become quite lonely, but it's all speculation at this point. Finally, they were working on a redacted underwater area, complete with a mermaid emoji. So yes, merfolk related things are still very much in progress. Back on land, the team has been working on Scott's office, which will be located inside the museum. They've also been adding distinct sections to the library. I'm guessing that there will be different categories 
categories of books where we can access different types of information that will help us in our gameplay. Maybe we'll even be able to find missing pages to some of the books around the island that will give us additional clues. The team was also working on the hot spring, specifically the hot spring system and conditions. To me, this means that there will be certain requirements we will have to meet in order to perhaps unlock the hot spring in the first place and further restore it. They were also creating some sort of ticket box. Could this be a raffle ticket box for one of the festivals? Could this be a ticket box to enter a certain unknown and unrevealed location on the island? Is this where we might purchase tickets to go island hopping or to visit the upper portion of Coral Island? Is it related to island visits in multiplayer? I have so many questions about this ticket box, okay? They were also setting up a redacted boat system with a fairy emoji, and I can't help but wonder if this is somehow related. Maybe the ticket box is to get on the ferry, but where is the ferry going to take us? Finally, in this category, they were working on the hot air balloons, which I just wanted to point out because this is the first time they've explicitly stated hot air balloons in the diaries. They're like, Sarah, we give up. It's not redacted anymore, okay? We saw your video. So yeah, hot air balloons are 100% confirmed to be in the actual game, not just the cover art. So next up, I wanted to share some notes about decor and props. It appears that the team has been working on implementing quite a wide variety of decor themes, and they've specifically noted much of it as outdoor decor. So I'm wondering if maybe certain items will only be placeable outside versus inside. I do have mixed feelings on this because I'd like to have flexibility to decorate with whatever I want, wherever I want, but if the outdoor versus indoor items are well categorized, then it could be okay, I guess. So one of the decor themes they hinted at included a Coral Island logo, so I wonder if they will have an entire decor set themed around the popular elements of the game, like Seth's Chicken, the Pufferfish logo and color palette, the Coral Island logo, the Stairway logo, those color palettes, and so on. They were also working on outdoor decor icons, and this note was accompanied by a mermaid emoji, so I'm wondering if there will be an entire merfolk furniture set. That would just be so gorgeous, I can only imagine, and my hopes would be that we would actually have to unlock this from the merfolk, like we'd have to maybe complete some sort of quests, like maybe there will be some sort of underwater town rank system as well, like we have on land, um, but it's for the merfolk kingdom, so we have to kind of help them restore elements of their kingdom, and as we reach each benchmark, maybe that will unlock a new piece to the furniture set or something like that. That's just like an entire speculation, but I think it'd be really cool. So this final note in this category is super interesting to me because they were working on some outdoor props and they included a birthday cake emoji with these notes. So they didn't specify it as a decor, it was specified as props, which they usually use to indicate something that is just on the island, you know, like working on items maybe inside someone's house or outside a storefront. That's when they usually use props from what I've noticed. I feel like this may indicate that at least someone's birthday will be celebrated on the island. I could totally picture us leaving our house on our birthday to find a whole little surprise setup for us. I think that would be such a cute cutscene. It could also be for one of the characters' cutscenes if there's a special story moment around one of the NPC's birthdays. Anyway, I just really want to see some sort of birthday celebrations on Coral Island. So how are we doing everyone? Are you still with me? You hanging in there? If you've made it this far and you love this series, be sure to hit the like button to let me know and also be sure to take a little hydration break and let's continue. Mini games. We love mini games, right? We talked about a few possibilities in the last episode, and today I have three more mini games to share with you all. The first involves a not emoji, which I'm thinking must be to indicate tug of war. It could also be a three legged race or something else related to ropes and knot tying, but these are just my ideas. They were also working on balancing several other redacted minigames, accompanied by swimming and wrestling emojis. I don't think we need to get too deep on this one, I'm sure it's literally a like swimming race or something along those lines. Although in terms of the wrestling emoji, I can't really picture anyone on Coral Island wrestling. We did see Scott in a wrestling uniform in some of David's older art, so it's entirely possible, and now I'm thinking like it's 
is everything David has ever drawn actually confirmed to be in the game? Maybe we should do a video investigating that. So what do we love more than mini games? Animals. We love animals. The team has been working on sculpting. Drum roll, please. Seals. Like those adorable ones we saw in this artwork with Raphael. And they've also been working on a proboscis monkey. I forgot these little things existed. They're like the long nosed monkeys. They're so funny looking to me, <laughs> but they're gonna be so cute, honestly, okay? So these animals were listed kind of as like just wildlife in Coral Island from my interpretation of the notes, but they did also indicate that they're working on another special animal. I feel like it's special because it is redacted and they included a panda emoji here. So I'm feeling like similar to that orangutan, maybe we have a special panda friend too. And then one more redacted animal. They're working on a redacted dog. So this once again seems pretty important. I don't know if this is a breed of dog that we're gonna have access to for a pet or if this will be a character. Maybe Taco will have a friend. The more dogs, the better for me. So I personally have zero complaints. And of course, like in every episode, we have to check in on our beloved NPCs. Now they're apparently sculpting more characters. Who could they be? Says the community manager. I don't know, you tell us. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the grand reveals of all these new characters. They're also working on more of their unique activity animations. There was one particular note here that included a telescope emoji. So I'm betting this is about someone who works at or frequents the observatory. They're also working on adding NPC fun facts. So I'm imagining these will display in the relationship UI. And I'm wondering if they'll be there from the start or if you will actually have to unlock them through interaction. And finally, for today's episode, the team is continuing to work on various aspects of multiplayer, so that's exciting. And they finally just said they're porting the game to the Switch. So that's awesome news. That's excellent. We all kind of suspected it. We knew they had the dev kit, but that's very cool to see that they're actually working on that right now. So those were a ton of exciting notes from the recent developer diaries. Definitely let me know which stood out to you the most, which you're most excited for, most curious about. And now it's time for your top comments. So for sake of continuity, these comments were from the last episode in the series. The first comment is from Ashley who said I know I've commented this before but I'm just dying for this to come to switch fingers crossed that's what they're working on which is confirmed now in this episode it is what they're working on so yay they also said thanks again for your videos you keep the hype going and honestly we are all doing it together so thank you the next top comment is from Wisnu they were just so kind and shared their happiness for the growth of my channel recognize my passion and effort for Coral Island Island since the beginning, even when it was in the Kickstarter campaign, and that they would like to see me as a character in the game, as the news anchor, or even as the goddess of good news, which I thought was so sweet. I'm always so amazed how many of you are this supportive of me and would actually like to see me in the game. I think it'd be so cool if someone modded me into the game. I think that would just be crazy. Thank you so much for your kindness. This comment was so, so sweet and completely made my day. And the final top comment is from Maple Gift, who said that they found my channel channel near the very first time I spoke about Coral Island that my videos always make them so excited for the game and my personality brightens up their day. I'm doing amazing. Oh my gosh. I don't pre-read these comments, by the way. I just go to the video and read the top three. So wow, y'all are so kind and so nice. I know I say it so much, but it's so true. You were all the sweetest and I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. So thank you so, so much for always leaving your thoughts on my videos. I always look forward to reading the comments. And before I leave you today, let's take a look at today's amazing fan art. Today's amazing fan art is by the most delightful Alejandro, whose art I featured many times before. I am always amazed by his talent and how amazing his pieces are. And today I just wanted to share this one because it completely brightened my day. That's understating it. I am not feeling so good, but I'm hoping that if I just rest enough, I will feel better. If my voice was a little off in this video, I'm sorry, I didn't want to 
put it out there in the beginning because maybe you wouldn't notice, but this was just the sweetest thing. Are you kidding me? It's the cutest thing ever. And I get to be in a piece with Raphael. Okay. So please everyone show some major love to Alejandro in the comments. I will also link all of his information in the description. And thank you so, so much Alejandro for sharing your amazing art with us. Well, there you have it, friends. I made it through the episode. Did you? There was so much good stuff in this video, so I hope you thoroughly enjoyed it. And with all that being said, thank you so, so much for watching. I love you all. And until next time, take care. And a very special thanks to Jose, Mandy, Meredith, Formotis, and Kuki, my Sunstone members. I love you all and thank you so, so much for your support. It really helps to make all of this possible and means the world to me.